Hi guys, welcome back. Now we're going to be meeting the Sumatran tiger. So Jay, can you tell us a bit more about this wild cat? I certainly can. We have um, two here at Dudley Zoo, we have a male and a female. Um, we've got Deceep, who's our female. Mm -hmm. She's just turned five years of age actually. And Joe, who's just in the window over there, he is three years of age. Um, so we've got the two at the moment. Where do they originate from? Um, they actually originate from the islands of Sumatra. Um, but there's roughly about five different types um, and they can originate from um, lots of different countries, yeah. So with the Sumatran tiger, what is their diet? That's what I'm interested to know. Um, here at the zoo, it's quite um, often similar to all the big cats around the zoo, so they get a lot of rabbit, mm -hmm. uh, quails, chickens, uh, beef, horse, uh, chicks. It's a large variety of food. Mm -hmm. um, we like to give them lots of food with bones on because they love to gnaw on them. Um, they eat lots of feathers and all kinds of stuff like that, and that's actually what keeps their, in, in their digestive system clean. Because mm -hmm. if you feed them too much clean meat, it's what we call steaks, okay. um, it would upset the stomach. So they like to have bone and feathers. And how do they sort of um, adjust to the climate, the UK climate? Because obviously these wild cats do come from more hotter countries. How do they adapt? and cope in the UK in this cold weather. Yeah, it is a bit of a chilly day today, isn't it? Um, but they cope really well. They've actually been born in our climates, mm -hmm. so their body has already adapted to our climates. These tigers actually originated from Germany, mm -hmm. which isn't too dissimilar to this country. The only difference is we probably get a lot more rain. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can see, they've got a lot of hiding places that are indoors, um, and in their internal dens is heating as well. So they've got the choice if they want to be outside in the elements or if they want to come inside and be in the warm, mm -hmm. they've been given that choice to do what they want to do. So you do your best to make sure their habitat is as, as much as similar it can be as, as the wild. That's correct, really. yeah. I mean, if you were to look in the inside of the paddock, there's a lot of trees, there's a lot of coverage. Um, they can go and hide if they want to. So if they didn't want to be seen by the visitors, they can go into the um, undergrowth at the back. Mm -hmm. Um, and you wouldn't be able to see them because you can see they're quite stripy and you'd yeah. think that orange coloration would stand out against the green. But it's perfect camouflage and they'll hide in the back and you can't see them. Brilliant. Now, is the Smarten tiger also endangered? It is, unfortunately. All five subspecies are endangered. Um, there's only a few, if you, there's only a few hundred of them left. If you have them all, the, all together, there's a couple of thousand. Mm -hmm. um, but the Smarten tiger, hundreds of them left. Mm -hmm. Um, our last pair bred really well. We had roughly about nine different cubs um, off our last pair. Yeah. These two have just been put together. They've been together just under two years now. So fingers crossed we yeah. can be start breeding um, and producing more cubs to go into the breeding programme. Why do you think it is that these species are endangered? Um, there's quite a few reasons. There's habitat loss. So the habitat where they originate from is being chopped down. Mm -hmm. um, Human population growth is increasing, constantly going into where these animals live. Yeah. Poaching is a big problem for the tigers. Their bones, their fur is very valuable, so they'll be killed for those items. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them will be put into um, medicines and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of problems that the tigers face in the wild, um, so they're persecuted quite a lot. Sergey, can you tell us a bit more about the difference between the subspecies of these tigers? Certainly. So these are the Sumatran tigers, mm -hmm. um, and these are the smallest of roughly about five different types. Um, so some differences are um, the colorations on their body, the spots and the stripes. Um, also where they come from in the world, because you've got these ones, the Sumatran tigers, you've got Chinese ones, you've got Indian tigers. Mm -hmm. um, and also the size difference, that's a big one. So yeah. these are the smallest, the biggest ones is the Amor or the Siberian tigers. So this is typically a small tiger? This is a small tiger, yeah. Wow. He's going to get bigger than this, as I say, he's three years of age. Yeah. Um, and they can get anything up to about 160 kilograms. Um, and the girls get up to about um, 90 kilograms. Wow. So the biggest tiger in the world, the Amor, is double the size of this. So you wow, can get, double um, the size of this Double the size, one. yeah. So they are massive in comparison. Mm -hmm. As you can see, this one's currently asleep, yeah. typically. So how long, do you know, do they sleep for quite long? They do, unfortunately. It's a bit like if everyone's got domestic cats at home. Yeah. They spend a lot of the days sleeping mm -hmm. um, and they become more active at night. Um, which is a downside to our visitors, obviously who want to see them, but at least they've got a nice view of them here at the window, they're nice and close, and as we were talking about the snow leopards, the children get the opportunity to get face to face with a tiger, yeah, that's yes. correct. Brilliant. As we said earlier, you did mention that these animals are endangered. Mm -hmm. Now here at Dudley Zoo, is there any programmes where people can help to sort of, um, you know, help with the conservation of yeah. wild animals, endangered animals? They certainly can, just by coming and visiting the zoo, they're supporting it. 
because some of our percentage of our money goes directly to these animals in the wild. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a, a charity called to, a 21st Century Tiger. We do a lot of work with those. They do a lot of work in the wild, securing habitats for them, mm -hmm. making sure they've got safe areas, um, and keeping people away from them, basically. So just by coming and visiting the zoo, you're helping tigers. So, Jay, you've got two smartened tigers here at Dudley Zoo. Are there any plans to breed more? Yes, we do have current plans to breed them. Uh, they are a relatively new pair, um, so they've just been put together in the last couple of years, so fingers crossed we are planning on breeding. Um, gestation, how long it takes for them to be born, is roughly about 14 to 16 weeks, so it's actually not that long for a big animal, everyone expects it to be a lot longer. Um, and when they do give birth, they can have anything up to about five cubs at a time. Um, but what, quite commonly they have triplets, that's quite a popular number, so that would do me, three babies would be fine. Brilliant. Behind you we can see the Smartin Tiger in the snow. What's this all about? That's correct, yeah. I mean, this picture was taken here at the zoo. Um, so as you imagine, all the elements of all year round all brings different stuff. And on the snow days, we actually use it to our advantage. We went into the paddock, we built him a big snowman. Um, and we also started playing with snowballs with them, um, just throwing them around, getting them encouraged to work and stuff like that. And they absolutely loved it. But a large part of our job as zookeepers for the cats, for all the animals on the zoo, is something called enrichment. Mm -hmm whereby we'll go into the enclosures um, and we'll put food items in there, we'll put different types of toys, mm -hmm. um, different kinds of scents, and all these things keep our animals mentally and physically stimulated. And it's a large part of our job. job. We try and do it every single day. Mm -hmm. But for instance, we won't use the same toy device, we won't use the same food every day, because otherwise they'll get bored of it. So we mix it up and we use something different every single day. So you try to make them their life as much as it's happy and comfortable and you know, here at the zoo. Exactly, yeah. So Joe, we're here outside the tiger's enclosures. Can yeah. you tell us a bit more about this? I certainly can, yeah. As you can see, it's quite dense foliage in there with all the trees and stuff like that. And we've pretty much tried to recreate what you'd actually find in the world. So they've come from jungles and forests and stuff like that. That gives them their privacy. So if they want to go into the background and hide, they can. And our female is actually out there somewhere and you can't really see her, can you? And she blends in really well. And also you've got the platforms in there because cats like to be getting high up. They don't like to be low down and be looked upon. Um, but this enclosure, unfortunately, is um, listed. It's grade two listed. Um, we've got roughly about nine of them all over the zoo, and there's only London Zoo in the whole country have got these. Um, What's that mean? So it means we can't touch them, we can't change anything to do with these. Right. So because they're listed, this is how they're going to stay forever. It causes a few problems. Obviously, we're trying to run a modern day zoo in outdated buildings, mm -hmm. but we get on fine. Our animals are healthy and everything breeds. But we have just received a grant to do some of our um, listed buildings at the bottom of the zoo. Our old bear ravine's just been restored um, because some of them are going into disrepair now because they are quite old. Uh, they were built in the, the 30s and the 50s. Um, but as I say, they are really rare. But we do get a lot of people that just come here to see the buildings as well as the tigers. Um, just to look at the architects and the way that they were designed because nothing else was designed in this way. Brilliant. I can also see here we've got some live wires. Is this to yes. prevent the lions from jumping out and the tigers jumping out? Yeah, it is, but these aren't electrified. These are more to stop people from falling in rather than really? the tigers be able to get out. That is correct. But on the inside, we have got some electric fencing. Um, but to be honest with you, uh, the, our tigers have got no need to try and get out. It's just there just in case. Um, and it does surround the old enclosure, so if they ever did try and get up, hopefully that would stop them. So Jay, thank you for showing us around the Samaritan Tigers enclosures, home, and also for telling us all these interesting facts. We've definitely learned a lot about the Samaritan Tiger today. You're welcome. The Samaritan Tiger is the smallest of the subspecies and can be located in the tropical rainforest of the Indonesian island Sumatra. The powerful hunter has black stripes which help them to hide in the long grass or shadows within the forest. An interesting fact is that no tiger has the same pattern of stripes. Each one is uniquely different. The tiger locates its prey through their good sense of hearing, sharp eyesight, strong sense of smell. A tiger can see six times better than people in the dark. They use their powerful jaw and teeth alongside its sharp claws to capture, kill and eat its prey. In order for a tiger to be successful when they hunt, they are extremely careful and quiet, creeping close to their prey. Unlike most cats, these tigers like water and are good swimmers and often lie in water to cool themselves down. <laughs> 